Are we live? Here. We're what? Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to call back to order the Pasco County Board of County Commission meeting of January 26, 2021. I would like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices and mute your microphones. At this time, uh, we will proceed with public hearings agenda, starting with item P47. Do we have proof? Yes, we do. Item P47 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on November 4th, 2020. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Denise Hernandez, Denise Hernandez Planning and Development. Item P47 is PDD 21. 0004 and this item was presented to the board at the first reading on uh, December 8th, 2020. There was a full presentation, so I will read the item, uh, the ordinance title, and today we re we're asking you to adopt the proposed comprehensive plan amendment. So this is an ordinance amending the Pasco County Comprehensive Plan, providing for a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to the Future Land Use Element Chapter 2, Goal Future Land Use 6, including text and figure revisions to the core reserve village separator provisions, existing development approvals and figures PH5, PH6, PH7, PH8, revisions to village I borders, and as necessary for internal consistency, providing for repealer severability and an effective date. Again, this is the adoption hearing on this item. Okay. So if you would adopt it by roll call vote. Move approval. Second. Oh wait, you guys get well, we gotta have y'all yeah, just wait a minute. We gotta have uh, public hearing here. Um, anyone or speak to this item? Uh, Mr. Chair, there are no one on the WebEx and there is no no emails on this matter either. Uh, anyone at the kiosk? There's no one at the kiosk. All right, thank you. I okay. do have a question. question. Um, I just want to know how much um, planning has gone in for trails in here, because I, I see an alternative roads map, and is it, are we on 43? Just to make sure I'm on the right. We're on 40, 40, 47. <laughs> because that, you know, I, I'd be very interested in seeing a map of the trails and how they're crossing some of these busy roads because we've gotten ourselves in messes. And I'm concerned of that, by the way, for Sunco, uh, the one that's Mr. going Chairman. to villages of Pasadena. Yeah. But that's not. This is a comprehensive I mean, plan amendment. Oh. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the wrong one. I'll look You're at the next the wrong one. I'll bring this up when we go to this other one. Right. This alternative vehicle trail. I know, I'm looking at that. I want to okay. talk to you about it. All right, I have a motion. And a, do I have a second? Second. And a second. All those uh, by roll call vote? Yes, sir. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Okay, we go to 48, I guess it is. Yeah. Item P48 was P48. published in the Tampa Bay Times on October 21st, 2020. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Denise Hernandez, item P48 is PDD 21003. Uh, this is the adoption hearing for this item, so we ask that you adopt the proposed comprehensive, the proposed ordinance amendments by roll call vote. Um, this went, this was a, uh, had a full presentation on this on December 8th of 20, so I'll re re read the item title. An ordinance by the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners amending the Pasco County Land Development Code, Section 602, J. Ben Harrell, Villages of Pasadena Hills, Stewardship District, revisions to tax tables and exhibits 602C and 602D to Chapter 602, J. Ben Harrell, Villages of Pasadena Hills, Stewardship District, including utility master plan and utility development fees and addition of 2020 VOPH utility master plan and as necessary for internal consistency, providing for applicability, repealer, severability, inclusion, inclusion into the land development code and an effective date. Okay. Is there anyone here from the public on uh, WebEx to speak to this item? I'm sorry, um, no one is on WebEx for this item and there are no emails on this item as well. Okay, is anyone at the kiosk to speak to this item? There is no one at the kiosk. All right, thank you. Okay, with that, uh, entertain a motion. I think we should start getting Okay, 
I'm sorry, but okay. I think mine was on number 43, and we're on number 48, so we're coming back to 43? That is correct. Yes, okay. after, after the public hearing, we're coming back. I'll move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Um, is this got to be roll call vote? vote? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. District 1, Commissioner Moore. I'm sorry, District 2, Commissioner Moore. Aye. <laughs> District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Aye. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Aye. District 1, Commissioner Chairman Oakley. Aye. Motion passed 5 0. We'll move on to P49. Uh, approved. Item P49 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 16, 2020. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. You've moved into the. Oh, excuse me. The public hearing agenda. So, if you would like, I would like you to go over the. Um, there are two rezoning agendas: regular and consent. Staff will present each application to the Board of County Commissioners. If staff or planning commission has recommended approval and there is no opposition, the application will be considered by the board without further presentation. If staff or planning commission has recommended denial, or if there is opposition to the application. The applicant will be given five minutes for presentation. The opposition will be given three minutes for each individual or five minutes for a group representative. And the applicant will be given three minutes for rebuttal. Any individual disagreeing with staff or planning commission recommendation or anyone wishing to object to any condition of the rezoning may at this time request the petition be pulled from the consent agenda, in which case that application will be heard under the regular agenda later on during the meeting. Otherwise, all rezoning applications on the consent agenda will be approved by a single motion and vote. If you wish to speak to any petition, please give your name and address and whether or not you've been sworn for the record. These are quasi-judicial public hearings. The law in Florida is that mere public support or opposition of an application is insufficient for this board to take action. Please limit your comments to those criteria found within the board's plan development code. Okay. Do we... Uh first public hearing. Um, my recommend my recollection is that there is you may want to do it if if you've got presentations but or, if you don't or or opposition, do, okay. opposition we'll right. take it up as we go okay uh, is there anyone uh, through Webex or email to speak to the sign no one on Webex on and no one have submitted emails on this matter okay. is anyone at the kiosk there's no one at the kiosk. All right, thank you. Um, Full approval. So leave it's on consent. So, so is on consent? Can oh yeah, continue. leave it on consent, and we'll go on to P50. Item P50 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 30th, 2020. Item P50 is a res is UT 21-0096, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, designating that area commonly known to as Bexley South Parcel 4, Phases 3A and 3B as a streetlight service area and consolidating Bexley South Parcel 4, Phases 3A and 3B and the existing Bexley South Parcel 3, Phase 1, Parcel 4, Phases 1, 2A and 2B into Bexley South as a streetlight service area for streetlight improvements and to levy assessments against the property benefited by the street lighting improvements in accordance with the Pasco County Code of Ordinances, Chapter 94, Article 3, Sections 94-46 through 94-56, and the recommendation is approval. Okay, is anyone here to speak on WebEx or by email on this item? There is no one signed up on WebEx and there have been no emails submitted on P50. Okay. How about, is there anyone at the kiosk? There's no one at the kiosk. Okay. Move approval of the consent agenda. Okay. One more, no, item. One more, one more item on the consent. Oh, we have one more item. So, all right, that remains on consent and we go on to P51. Item P51 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 30th, 2020. 
P51 is UT21-0095. It's a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners of Pasco County, Florida, designating that area commonly known to as Cypress Preserve Phases 2B and 2B2 as a streetlight service area and consolidating Cypress Preserve Phases 2B1 and 2B2 and the existing Cypress Preserve Phases 1A, 1B, 2A, and 3C into Cypress Preserve as a streetlight service area for streetlight improvements and to levy assessments against the property benefited by the street lighting improvements in accordance with the Pasco County Code of Ordinances, Chapter Chapter 94, Article 3, Sections 94-46 through 94-56 comes to rec recommendation of a approval. Okay. Is there anyone to speak on WebEx or is there any emails to be read into the record? No one is on WebEx and no emails submitted on this item. Okay. Is there anyone at the kiosk? There's no one at the kiosk. Okay. Thank you. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Third time's a charm. <laughs> motion, <laughs> motion and a second to uh, approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passed five zero. Okay. So we're at uh, P52. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, P52 was published in the Tampa Bay Times on December 2nd, 2020. Mr. Chairman, and I yes. believe you have people to be promoted on this one, and you might want to do swearing in because you do have an applicant um, and a team. For that. Okay. Madam Clerk, would you swear in the people here to speak to this item? Sir, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, so help you God? I do. Okay. I assume everyone said here or I, so, okay. Um, go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development, P52, is PDD 212173. It's a zoning amendment in the name of Chelsea Acquisition and Chelsea Acquisition 2 LLC. It's for a change in zoning from R4 High Density Residential District and C1 Neighborhood Commercial District to an MF2 Multiple Family High Density Residential District. Sorry about that. The property is located in Northwest Pasco County on the east side of Old Dixie Highway and north of Gulf Way. The site contains approximately 64.33 acres and it's undeveloped or the portion that is before you today. The applicant proposes to develop the site with multifamily dwellings in conformance with the MF2 multiple family high density district standards for development. The site is part of an expired plan unit development which was approved for multifamily dwellings. Phase one of this planned unit development was constructed before the entitlements expired, and it's known as the Park at Chelsea Apartments. Okay. On August 9, 2005, the planned unit development district zoning was repealed through Ordinance 05-32. In accordance with the Land Development Code, a PUD plan that expires shall cause the property to revert to the zoning district that existed prior to the rezoning to PUD. In this case, the subject site had, ori had an original zoning of R4 high density uh, residential district. Under the current zoning and the future land use, um, you, the uh, property owner may be able to get 384 dwelling units. So the site has a future land use of Res 6 under the comprehensive plan. Okay. The applicant has volunteered to record a deed restriction, restricting the property, uh, limiting it to a townhome product housing type which is consistent with the park at Chelsea apartments that already exists on portions that are south uh, of the site in order to maintain the consistency and to limit the number of units 200 to 230 townhomes um, on the site. Additionally, the applicant has also agreed to record the following deed restriction. I'm going to read it into record. Within 100 and to add to that to the deed restriction rather, within 120 days of the county's request, or construction plan approval for the subject property, whichever occurs first, the applicant developer agrees to grant the county at no cost a non-exclusive easement in a form mutually acceptable to applicant developer and the county for drainage and flow through purposes over through and across mutually acceptable areas a, along the western boundary edge of the portion of the subject property that abuts Old Dixie Highway, and B, along the southern boundary edge of the property of the old golf course located on the subject property which lies north of Gulf Way, south of Augusta Boulevard, and between Old Dixie Highway and Kemper Drive. 
as the surrounding area is characterized by single family and multifamily residential uses. Um, sorry about that. As you can see, this is the zoning map for the property. The areas that um, appear yellow, those are the PUD areas where the Park at Chelsea apartments um, currently exist. And the surrounding land use. And the aerial showing um, the access to the property. And this is actually uh, the plan that's been provided by the applicant which basically details the actual um, areas that are developable and the, uh, the areas that are being proposed for open space and uh, drainage. And this actually comes to you with a recommendation of approval from both the Planning and Development Department and the Planning Commission. Here for any questions you may have, and Mr. Clark Hobby is on as well. Okay. Is anyone here from um, from WebEx? Or it would be applicant's presentation at this point. Want to present? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Clark Hobby, Hobby and Hobby, PA, 109 North Brush Street, Tampa, Florida, and I have been sworn. Uh, we're happy to be here today on this project, which is phase two of what's called the Park at Chelsea Apartments in Hudson. As the board is no doubt aware, the subject site is part of the West Market area and the Harbors District that the county has focused so much effort on uh, creating <coughs> infill development and redeveloping sites. And in that Harbors plan, the, the county <coughs> identified the fact that we needed to work very hard to create a, pl a plan that encouraged vacant, unused, and undeveloped properties to develop so that we could replace the housing stock that's in the Hudson area. And subsequent to that, the board took the action to eliminate mobility fees in this subject area for that reason. As Denise noted, this is phase two of an existing project. Uh, my client, which is a long time Tampa family uh, that has owned two multifamily projects in the county since the early 80s, owns the existing phase one, which is a townhouse project. And all they want to do is have the phase two that was originally contemplated by the old PUD. Uh, my client will continue to own the sites and they will lease out the townhouse product um, that will be built there. So as you heard from Denise, to make sure that the project is being developed consistent with what I'm telling you, we've agreed to some deed restrictions. The first of which limited even though we are rezoning this for mf2 it limits it to only a townhouse type product the second part of it is to limit it to 230 townhomes which is a substantial reduction in the amount of density it's already allowed on the site under the comp plan and the existing zoning and then the third uh restriction that denise just read into the record is to address what is a county desire to help our neighbors with existing flooding and sea pines. So we've been working very diligently with the county staff and the resident commissioner to try to come up with a plan that will create a series of new drainage ditches along old Dixie Highway and a portion of the old golf course open space on the site. And we will need to spend a couple more months working with your staff and with our engineer to create the final widths of the easements and what's going to go in there. But make no mistake, my client is bound to work with the county on that and to create a design that not only works for our client and may be a benefit to our client, but it's really going to what we believe help solve the flooding that has existed out there for many years. And that's what the third leg of the deed restrictions uh, that are before you today are. But as I said, we're limiting the use now to a lower number of units than presently exist. So we are actually going to be uh, diminishing the potential traffic impacts. Um, having said that, Denise, can you put up the map that you had up earlier? Yeah, 
so I just wanted to point this out uh, for the public and for the the board. The orange area is where we propose to develop uh, the units in phase two, and they will be in all circumstances beyond behind and beyond a, a landscaping that runs along the boundary where the golf courses was and where the townhouse units are. So no one will be able to see these units, we believe. And we also think that it's going to have a nice buffer from the other open space on the site. Uh, as I said, we're gonna be good neighbors here. We are going to be heavily buffered in quite a ways from our neighbors, but we're also gonna help with the flooding and I'm happy to answer any questions that you or the public may have on it. We do agree to the deed restriction that was read into the record. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone from the public here uh, want to speak to us on WebEx? No one uh, from the public is on WebEx. The, do you we have did an receive. Email? Um, we did receive two emails, um, not asked to be read into the record, so there will be file only. Okay anyone at the kiosk to speak to this matter there is no one at the kiosk all right thank you commissioner starkey has a question you have a question <laughs> okay. uh just i talked with um the applicant's representative about the trail that would be going up old dixie highway that's an important trail that will uh take folks up to the uh, sunwest park and um do you want to talk about that conversation um, Chair, Commissioner, and, and I haven't had a chance to speak to you. The, the resident commissioner and staff and I have been talking about this at length, and I'm sure I'll comment in a, in a moment. And obviously, I can't share with you what he's saying in ex parte communications. But in recent days, I've learned that the plan right now is for staff to extend the multi-use path up the west side of Old Dixie, not on our side. Okay. However, and I'll say this for the benefit of the resident commissioner, as we work through the drainage issues and how wide the drainage ditch needs to be, we will also be mindful of opportunities for trails on our side and trail connectivity. And so we'll plan on working with your staff to figure out the best plan for all. Right now, the, the immediate concern is dealing with the drainage ditch and trying to come up with a design there that isn't overly burdensome. Some of the initial estimates were for a very, very wide ditch that I don't think really would be beneficial to the area or my client, but we're going to work that out hopefully very quickly with your staff. As soon as we get done with the rezoning, our intention is to mobilize our engineer coastal design out of Newport Ritchie to work with your staff to figure out that edge condition of old Dixie and make sure that the trails are going to work and make sure that the, uh, the drain is just going to work for its uh, desired intent. All right, well, I look forward to hearing from either Commissioner Mariano or someone from staff that's going to tell me that the trail is going on the other side of the road because to not have a trail there is going to be a problem for the county trail network. So um, I'm hearing you saying it, the ditch comes first and then the, then a possible trail. I just need confirmation there that we are planning for that trail. Mr. Chairman. Yes. And Commissioner Starkey. Um, can you also update, because I believe they had spoken about a sidewalk going in as well. Is the sidewalk going on on the east side or the west side? I thought they mentioned that. Which is not a trail. Yeah, so Ms. we... Mr. Mr. Chairman, it may be more helpful if the resident commissioner speaks on this because he's okay. been working with staff extensively on it. Okay, Mr. Mariana. Uh, so in, in working with staff and in, in the... In the um, applicant uh, they've been very good as far as we had a nice public zoom meeting we had the association president a lot of the other members of the board some other citizens were there and we discussed a lot of different things um, we just found out that the trail is designed to go on the other side all the way through we've been looking at trying to put a trail on this side as well because I think it's good not only for the residents of all the sea pines but as well as own people to have the trail being able to go up to the park on their side as opposed to going crossing the street until the end until later on so that trail, um, I didn't push them to go put it into the deed restrictions. This just happened less than, what, half hour ago? Uh, David Goldstein was working and, and trying to make sure we can get this provision because it's very unusual to put this condition into a, into a deed restriction at this stage. 
this is something that the applicant is willing to do to make sure we do get the drainage we need. Uh, so let me talk about the drainage for a minute. Um, this morning we had item number C16 um, with Catherine Janelle's property up on Old Dixie Highway just south of Sea Pines at, at Gulfway. Uh, that's a property we've been working on for several months and we just did our part today. We're, we're buying that piece of property. So all the storm that we're talking about coming from Sea Pines is not going to be able to go in the area, have it in a controlled area, treat it before it gets released into a canal that's much closer than the other one, which has got two narrow ways to get into it. Uh, it's going to be a major, major benefit on the stormwater. Um, Dr. Chang looks like we've come to agreement with her, too. She's got the property to the north part of what this map shows going across that gets right to Old Dixie, which will then connect to where this property takes it in. So staff has, has really just told us that's going to be a change, too, because that was a little different than we first thought. So with that connection going east-west on Dr. Chang's property, north-south on this property is going to be a, a nice wide channel. We don't know quite how much we need, but I can assure you Swiftman has been working on this, I think, for three years now. Uh, so they'll have some good information for us. I'm confident that we can work with staff, uh, and Mike, hopefully you'll help make this happen, within 120 days to find out what widths we need, especially heading north-south. And then the Gulf Way Drive coming across, that when there is an easy fix to get that done, we can make that fit with, the, with any perimeters, kind of, pretty much, but we can make that fit as well. This is going to be a major, major benefit for the entire Sea Pines area. It's always tough to get the water out at the end of a stormwater situation. This is taking all those people that have suffered for all these years, and now we're going to be able to get the water out to the Gulf where it needs to go. And there will be some other improvements I work with Swift Mud, too, up and down Old Dixie. That could even help more. But um, I'm happy that uh, you know, Clark and the Williamses were able to put this in for a deed restriction. It gives us the leverage we need. And with, us, with our staff in Swift Mud, I'm, I'm sure we can turn this over quickly. And then at that point, we'll find out how much trail we can get and make that work, because they, they were very agreeable to that as well. That's your question. Well, yeah, just just raising the flag that make sure that the trail is happening, not a sidewalk, a trail. All right, so Mr. Hobby, you hear that? We're going to make sure that trail does happen, uh, especially as <laughs> not on the west side, on to your side, but either way, it's going to happen. And I think we might be able to get a bonus for getting both. But Commissioner Starkey, thank you for bringing it up because. Uh, they need to know how important that is to us. Right. Yeah, I appreciate that's it. Amazing, that's amazing. I, I yep. understand, Commissioner Starkey. I've just, I've got the the drainage is the more complicated part, so we got to solve that first, and then we'll figure out where the trail is going to go. But right now, your staff is saying that they want it, and it's planned to go on the west side. And and I will say, in fairness, it does does make sense to go on that side too, uh, because as it goes up there, it not only goes through. It's all Swift Mud property for like a couple of miles which is like wide open for us to go. And we can even go put some time, if you heard me talk about too, possibly even like a fire trail so we have a really wide path up there that will help us with fire prevention as well. We might even get some state grants to help us out with that. So All right. I'll move approval. Second. Got a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like so. Motion passed 5-0. Okay. Okay. I think we're moving on to R42. I think we are. All right. Okay, so this is a resolution, PDD 21-0005, and it's a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners acting as a Board of Supervisors for the J. Ben Harrell Villages of Pasadena Hills Stewardship District, adopting vill the Villages of Pasadena Hills 2021 Financial Plan, which will be applicable within the J. Ben Harrell Pasadena Hills Stewardship District. So we're just asking you to... Um, approve that resolution. Mm -hmm. so you said 42? 42. 42. We got proof? Just a resolution. Just a resolution. Just a resolution. We don't need proof? Okay. Second? Got a motion? Got a, got a motion there, second here. Okay, got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed 5 0. Okay, Burn. so. R43 43, is PDD 210006, a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners acting as the Board <coughs> of Supervisors for the J. Ben Harrell Villages of Pasadena Hill Stewardship District, allowing golf carts, autonomous vehicles, and low speed vehicles to operate on permitted streets in the J. Ben Harrell Villages of Pasadena Hills Stewardship District. Comes here with a recommendation of approval. Move approval. Yeah. And a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed 5 0. 
R44 is PDD 210007. It is a resolution by the Board of County Commissioners acting as the Board of Supervisors for the J. Ben Harrell Villages of Pasadena Hills Stewardship District, establishing the Villages of Pasadena Hills Fee Credit Registry, which shall be applicable within the J. Ben Harrell Villages of Pasadena Hills Stewardship District. Recommendation is approval. So moved. And a motion? Second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed 5 0. Thank you, Commissioners. Okay. We've already covered all the other or items, I guess, because we've skipped around on them. Should be good. Mm, yes. Okay. So we go on to old business. I guess on this way. All right. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Three minutes or less. <coughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate, obviously, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the big win going to the Super Bowl. So, cheers for them. Yeah. Great. I had a nice call from uh, Brian Ford, which is the uh, Buck CEO. He runs the day-to-day -day operations for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gave me a call. It was in the week before last and wanted to thank Paso County for all their support and the citizens of Paso County for all their support. So, it was nice to receive that call from him. Um, so again, let's go get them at BKC, right? How, yeah. how cool is it that's here at home yeah. as well? I wish we could all be there, and but you know, it is what it is, right? Um, this morning, we I uh, want to thank the commissioners for passing C2. It was a resolution um, recognizing uh, Mr. De Dennis um, Fodee's retirement from Pasco County. He spent 36 years working for the citizens of Pasco County. Did some great things like modernizing our radio technology and working with our regional partners and much more that is covered in that resolution. Again, thank you to Mr. Uh, Dennis Fodee for spending his career here in Paso County. We all wish you the best, sir, in your retirement. Last one, thank you to our uh, Paso County legislative delegation. They met last week. We all know in a COVID world, meeting does not happen at the drop of the hat. So Ralph and uh, Mike and everybody that got together and, and, and um, got the team to the legislative delegation to meet. Thank you. Thank you to um, Senator Hooper and his staff for helping to make that meeting happen. And um, I do want to congratulate um, the incoming um, chair for the legislative delegation, uh, Representative Randy Maggard, and uh, Senator Danny Burgess for being elected vice chair of the delegation. We look forward to continually continuing to work with them. Um, and I think that is it for the for me for the day. Um, yeah. You sure? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was a little over three minutes, but you're okay. All right, Ms. Starkey? Yeah, um, I received an email, and it's not the first time, and I've had people talk to me about this, about the condition of the restroom facilities at the trailhead at Suncoast and 54. And um, it is deplorable. And uh, I did forward it on to Keith, and he said they're going to look at it, but to have one outhouse, porta potty, that is not taken care of is really getting a lot of our cyclists that come from all over. You know, they're not they're not happy about it. They ask, could they at least have two? Uh, so if they can well, can't walk into one, there's an alternative. So hoping we can get something better there until we redesign that trailhead. But it's it's like um, these women were describing it, and there's no way there's no way it's usable. So that's really not premier at a, at a very um, popular trailhead. That's 54 on the Sun Coast. Um, I was glad today to see after eight years that we did approve the, the uh, toilet facility that's coming in at Starkey and the Sun Coast Trail. Before, if you parked in the park in the day use area and rode your bike out to the Sun Coast and north or south, the, the first restroom turning north is in Hernando County at Anderson Park. So um, we really needed a restroom there and maybe to be thinking of, well, hopefully the next one will be at Ridge Road. So, um, and also there will be a, a bike repair station and a place to get out of the bad weather if something comes up. So I'm so glad to see that that's, that's finally happening. Um, so I thought Commissioner Moore was going to bring up vaccines, but you didn't. So I was um, prepared to we, discuss it, but 
Well, you go ahead, and there's maybe one little thing on it, but I'm not going to. I did um, shoot, uh, let me see here, uh, a question to, let me see if they answered. But um, I just want the public to know that, um, you know, we, we're constantly, of course, it's not the county's program, it's the health department's program. First, you need to know that. But, you know, we do care that our citizens are having um, challenges getting the vaccines when they want them. And we, we, we want all our seniors to be vaccinated as soon as possible. Um, but when you have 20,000 people logging on to a system all at the same time, um, not everyone's going to get through. Um, I did receive an email from um, John Hagen, who used to be our head of our EDC, saying that he thought that um, there was a blocker um, for co that, that if you had enabled your cookies block, you know, your pop up block, you could not get through and you went into the spinning world. I have asked Salesforce to see if this is true, so that if, if that is true, that we can recommend that you do not have the pop-up blocker when you are trying to um, access the site. And they, maybe, they, I think, tell them that Salesforce is the parent company that oversees the... Pay, uh, Salesforce is a platform that CDR McGuire uses. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so, um, so they're looking into um, that question about the cookie, so we can give, um, again, some more um, information. But uh, until we get more vaccine, not everyone's gonna to fit through. Uh, I understand Miami-Dade has, has decided that only Miami-Dade County residents can apply for vaccines in their county. I'm not sure that we're allowed to set those kind of rules and I guess they're taking the, the uh, view of sue me and then we'll find out. Um, but I am glad to, that's what I heard. <laughs> Um, I am glad to see that at least our governor is saying you have to be a Florida resident to get the vaccine because I just keep hearing of people flying in and driving into Florida and getting the vaccines and, you know, I'm fine for doing that after our residents get vaccinated, but I'd really like, like to see if we can't get our, our people are trying so hard to get vaccinated to get that done. I will say um, I was able to get my mom um, her first vaccine, although she still ended up going into the hospital. Uh, but kudos to the health department, the way they were running it, because it was so smooth and so well done. Um, I just thought the operation was running great. So I guess if you can get in, then it's, it's smooth sailing. But I know, I like you guys, I'm getting tons and tons of email no complaining way. about not being able to get there. But the issue isn't that we have a bad program. The issue is there's just not enough vaccines. We have a plan here in Pasco that as soon as we, if we can get more, we can take it out to neighborhoods, to churches. Um, and as you see, we're at St. Leo. We can get it out into the community fast. Just please give us some more vaccine and let us show you what we can do. Um, a while ago, um, I might have talked to you about the problem with the vouchers and sex and uh, and and uh, Pasco County residents joining a line with people from all over the country to get our Section 8 vouchers, also called Housing Choice. I'm glad to say uh, to tell you that that is being fixed, and uh, we will be able to be um, serving Pasco County residents first as well with those Housing Choice mm -hmm. vouchers. Gotcha. Um, uh, I wanted to share with you that Dr. Gills has uh, given a grant to Amskills, uh, a donation. He has uh, graciously donated uh, $200,000 towards the purchase of the building and um, a minimum of three hundred fifty-one dollars matching towards renovation, $351,000 towards the renovations of the building. So we are actively um, out there looking for uh, donations to match Dr. Gill's very generous offer um, to build, you know, a world-class training center in the holiday area for, for manufacturing. So um, also Amskills was uh, part of a grant that um, the Dallas Community College, I think it's Community College, put in for a federal grant um, to bring the boot camp model there. And so um, they were successful. We got notification on Friday. So this is part of the long-term sustainability of that program of franchising out to different communities and bringing 
um, our proven workforce training model out to the country, which I think is great. With, with this COVID, with COVID, you saw how much manufacturing of, of very vital resources are being done overseas, and we, we, we got to stop that and bring that back. So um, congratulations on that. Um, uh, and talking um, today about the uh, um, citizen survey, uh, we talked about landscaping. And I just wanted you to know what's going on in my office. Um, we are researching um, properties whose landscaping has um, gone away or is in really poor condition. And I would, I would say to you, as you're driving around your districts, take a look because a business may come in and then three or four years later, all of a sudden the trees are gone, the hedge is missing and it looks really seedy and, and it looks, reflects poorly on the county. So every Friday we're notifying 10 um, businesses that um, they're required to keep their landscaping up as part of their, um, their CO or their de development approvals. And we're working with them to um, bring that landscaping back in. Lastly, um, T. Barta. Uh, so, as you know, T. Barta has a plan to to put in a rapid bus um, line from the Groves, starting at the Groves and going all the way down to St. Pete. Our challenge there is, um, well, one of course, funding. We have to determine where the funding is going to come from for this. And remember, we are the largest MSA without a transit solution. And the one that we've, we've settled upon is the most uh, inexpensive way to get this started. And there's federal money once we figure out where the local match comes from. But our big blocker is Hillsborough County. The commissioner representing Hillsborough County, um, when asked to define what regional meant, said regional is the different parts within Hillsborough County. So um, with that kind of mentality, it's difficult to put in a regional transit system because everything goes through Hillsborough County. And if they're not playing on the team, there is no team. So I have asked T. Barta if they would, um, if we could consider convening a meeting of the, the three counties that really this involves, Pasco, Hillsborough, Pinellas, the MPOs and what other, you know, different transit organizations, um, PSTA, HART, and of course ours is part of the county, to have, to have a discussion amongst all the commissioners about how we arrive at a solution for transit in Tampa Bay, because uh, we're at an, Im we're kind of at an impasse with the views being represented by certain uh, commission at Tibarda. Interesting. Oh, wow. And we don't know if that's everyone's view. Hmm. But we can't, there's no reason to have a Tibarda if we don't have um, all of the counties together on the same page. So that's my suggestion to. Yeah, you Commissioner, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and yes. you know, it's, that's unfortunate. And I saw some of that happening when I sat on Tibarda as well. And uh, you made a good point. If if it's a regional yeah. group, obviously it's meeting, and unfortunately some people aren't thinking regional. And that's and that's the same thing we were going through, you know, when we talk about you know bus rapid transit and in in the in the managed lanes and all those types of things. Unfortunately, an individual that sits on T Barda isn't really concerned about what affects Pasco County. Yeah only if it's concerned about what affects a small section right. of Hillsborough County, which is actually a small section of Tampa, if I'm not correct, is right. what their big concern is. So the rest of us pay the price for their um, unfortunate... Um, Small-mindedness. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> unfortunate um, views on how transit works and what regionalism means. So I, I do not disagree with you whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, so I think the only solution is to have everyone at the table together. Yeah. I would love to be there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That it? And just, right. just to touch it. on that, too, with the TMA, we found that same issue. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mr. Patrick. Thank you, Chairman. 
Um, first, I would like to nominate Dr. William Killinger for the Pasco Emergency Medical Services Advisory Board. Okay. Move to approve. Second. And a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed 5 0. Thank you. Um, I would also like to address I know I have had the Moon Lake community ask about when our next neighborhood cleanup is. I will be doing the neighborhood cleanup in the Moon Lake area roughly uh, approximately in April. There will be two dumpsters, one located at Winn Dixie parking lot and another one in their neighborhood. So if they want to start getting their community together and involved, start trying to prepare and get people to come on in. Remember, anyone can bring in their trash and throw their trash away. If we need an extra dumpster, then we can bring in another dumpster. Um, also, I mentioned earlier today about Walmart and different parking lots. Please, if someone drops their trash, make sure we just pick it up. So I am asking community. I know everyone works together on that. Thank you. Um, just to help keep Pasco clean. Um, I was also honored to be able to present the resolutions to the Human Trafficking Commission last Wednesday, and they were very appreciative. Also, please remember, they are having their light up the night this Saturday, um, January 30th from 6 to 8. They will also be having a 5K race in the morning. And, of course, please remember to be safe during the Super Bowl Sunday and pass, remember Pasco doesn't buy it, so make sure everyone stays safe. And lastly, I wanted to mention if someone was still trying to get vaccines for COVID, they can go to the patient portal, fl.com, or they can call the phone number that's online at 850-848-5287 to schedule their appointment. And Lastly, again, in Moon Lake, I just want them to know I have been listening and I have reached out to Republic and I'm also working with staff as well to try to help them resolve their waste management, waste man management concerns. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mariano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the Gulf Coast Consortium, I sit as Secretary Treasurer, have been for the past few years, and we're coming up for um, support again for the local board. So. If, Commissioner Oakley, if I get you the le letter later on, if you could, if the board would allow me to serve as Secretary Treasurer again. Um, All right, I need a motion to that. And motion. Second. Motion and a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed, 5 0. All right. And again, I want to thank my items. All right, thank <laughs> you. Um, and I want to thank uh, Mike Carbella and his team for the stormwater um, between Brantford, Joe Amoa, uh, Don Carey, working with Clark Hobby. That whole area there is, is going to, it's something you know, we've working on for many, many years. We've got a solution in front of us, so I'm very excited that uh, the team working together and, and creatively trying to make, make the county better is, uh, is going forward. It's got some great things going on at SunWest with the volleyball guys coming in, so a lot of good things coming up, and I think it's going to help elevate the coast. And as we saw that citizen survey, uh, the west side does need more, and this board, I think, is making all the right moves for it. So thank you. Okay, is that it? Mr. Bottles? Yes, sir, I have a few things. Um, first, uh, I think based on what we saw um, the Senate President talk about yesterday in Tallahassee, we probably ought to go ahead and just cancel PASCO Day because we will not be able to meet in right. in the facilities there. So, you know, that's our recommendation. So if you have reservations that are out there, just go ahead and cancel them, and we will work other means to I connect with our that legislators. Was happen, so so that's, that's the first one. The second one is... Um, just to let you know that over the last few weeks, a couple different departments have received national awards. We had a couple people in animal services that won national awards from national associations, and then the community development also won a national award with partnership with Vincent House over the last couple weeks. So more, more great work happening. And then we were notified, I guess a little more than a week ago, that uh, we got awarded a planning grant uh, to look at resiliency uh, along the coast and a vulnerability assessment on the coast from uh, DEO. So that should be coming to you as the process gets married, about $750,000 to look into that and do some, do some more planning on that effort. Only for planning, coast. none for capital? That's planning. 
that's a plane and vulnerability assessment. Okay. Uh, and uh, the last one is um, so to talk vaccine. So we did get, or the Department of Health got 9,700 vaccines this week uh, for distribution. 3,500 of the 9,700 are for second shots. So about a third of those went to second shots. Wow. They're still doing St. Leo and Sears, uh, as well as you know through the normal uh, registration process. We are working with the state. Uh, in fact, we talked to them yesterday about trying to set up some means to have a central county location. Um, you know, but more to follow on that, but we're trying to get something in the center of the county too, working through the state on that. And hopefully we'll have something to announce within the next, hopefully no more than a week, uh, but that's what we're working on. All right, that's it? Yeah. Mr. Steinsner? Mr. Chairman, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the, yeah. the work that several of my lawyers did that uh, resulted in the res part of the resolution that was brought to you this morning, um, notably Jordan Wolfgram assisting the Public Services Branch um, with legal documents that didn't exist prior to COVID, uh, with legislation that nobody had reviewed prior to COVID, um, spent long nights um, trying to get the documents put together so that um, the administrator's team could get those, get that money out to, to various individuals. Um, I've, in, I've been in contact with the chairman. Uh, as the board is aware, section 102.1 114 with regard to the canvassing board indicates that if the chair is uh, unable to serve um, uh, on the canvassing board uh, due to disqualification um, the, and supporting, a supporting, supporting a candidate, that sort of thing, um, that another member of the Board of County Commissioners is to be um, appointed as a substitute member uh, who is not a candidate. In this case, these are municipal elections, so no one would be a candidate, um, and who is not an active participant in a, in a campaign or candidacy of any ca candidate within those municipal uh, elections. Um, uh, the supervisor has reached out to me again and asked who the Board of County Commissioners representative will be for the muni municipal elections in um, leading up to March. Is that for one one person? It, it's one person. Um, uh, one board member needs to needs to be in that in that role. Anyone? It's best if it's someone who lives near where they meet than having to have someone over here drive all the way over there unless they want to move the meetings over here. Going over to heaven. I can't go. <laughs> what, what'd you say? I said you're going to heaven over when you go to the east side. So. <laughs> it's so far. I mean, that's why. What do y'all? Well, what do you do? <laughs> do it. Well, you are to be well, on the other side coming this way. <laughs> it's pretty break. Well, break. no, you're. These are. It's in March. You're not up for election oh, for oh. municipals. Oh, is it? Yeah, I'm right for. Okay. <laughs> I thought you meant for the next time around. No. I won't be here. This part of that's during spring break. I'm. Is that when it's happening? Do you know? When is it? It's in March, but I don't know the date. Yeah, part of it will entail that week. I'm gone. Well, spring break's the uh, first week in April. I'll right? be gone the no, 11th. It's the third week in March. The week of March. The 11th. Like the week of the 15th. Where it starts the third week. Well, yeah. Saturday the 12th, 13th. Oh, March 11th? So it's 30 oh, my husband. Yeah. That's a Thursday. No, I, I'm talking about I'll be gone. I'm leaving oh. Thursday. I'll be gone for a week and a half. And I can't because uh, the public I, test is on April 7th. The next one is April 13th, March. April 15th, April 23rd is the schedule that they have put out. I'm, I'm supporting candidates. <laughs> I know I I'm do. I'm too involved so. in the elections. Yeah. I'm in support of a candidate. Let me Jack. see. Um, it's just one person is on. Is this Newport Richie as you well? You said April yes. 13th, 15th, yeah. and the 23rd? Yeah, I'm opening a fundraiser for one of the candidates. 7th, 13th, 15th, oh, 23rd. Oh, I'm out because 
Yeah, Mike Peters. I'm helping Mike Peters. Sorry. You're it, Oakley. I can't be it. I'm supporting Dorothy. Dorothy. The only reason I'm bringing this up is that he's got a he's got a conflict. Oh. What time? Yeah. There you go. Um, Good experience for her. The seventh. It's at three p.m. I, I can. You, you, the probably all thirteenth is at three p.m. Uh, three three p.m. into the evening. Uh, the fifteenth is the fifth. It is 5 p.m. 23rd is 5 p.m. Those are the start times. It's the Municipals and Lake Paget Independent Special District. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Didn't, um, I'm just curious because I heard it went pretty well. Didn't, um, yeah, someone else. Corley's office appoint some uh, citizens last year? Last time, I thought it went pretty well. Never thought we uh, support a statutorily. Judge. The board is required to field a candidate, and, and the supervisor has asked me to ask you. Uh, what time does it go? I'm already endorsing somebody. Huh? What time do they go to? Think fast. I already know who it's I'm pretty quick. <laughs> it's not. Um, the, most of them go fairly quickly. The 13th would be a longer day because that's the actual election and they have to wait for, for election results to come in. Can we split this between two commissioners? Yeah, hey, Commissioner Pichachi, you try, give it a shot. You enjoy it. So, you know. <laughs> um, it's during, I it's, believe uh, Mr. Giordano is still willing to become, a, is willing to be an alternate. She can't do the county commissioner she's up. not. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I said, do the municipal. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to stay on it after the municipal. You'd have to come off, yeah. but that would be the one you could do. No baseball season. I'm trying. You don't have to make a decision today. You don't have to make a decision today. Just, just let me know shortly, or let Mr. Einstein or know as soon as possible. I'm <laughs> okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Well, wh while it was still kind of your time, why don't you, is it anybody or everybody gotten the letter that we answered to? Mr. Mr. Steinsteiner answered to the tax collector. Yes, sir. Is there any questions to Mr. Uh, Steinsteiner Wait, about I, that? Well, the senator, Mr. Chairman, the senator sent us an email back. Um, senator who? The senator, the senator, tax collector, senator, oh, okay. he sent an email back. Um, he stated, the issue is we have companies of Pasco with a BTR, but charging the Hillsborough sales tax of 8.5% and not the Pasco 7%. And again, he's, he's right, because I worked on some of this with them last year, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, they've done everything possible and has the Florida Department of Revenue to get them to correct their practice, but some are totally ignoring the request. So in essence, you know, and he's not sure what to do on his side, and I don't disagree. In essence, you know, if people aren't responding and they've been notified by not only the tax collector as well as some, probably some of us in the county and the state, and they're ignoring that, um, they are not, in, and if they've been noticed, and on the Mr. Stein's trying to jump in, if they've been noticed and they are literally ignoring and paying their tax to another county and not paying their fair share here, um, I mean, what's I guess I would ask what's, what's the, the difference recourse? yeah what's the difference between a citizen not paying their property taxes properly which in essence puts a lien on their home in a business not paying their penny for Pasco tax that they're required to do to the county so that's a matter for state revenue and the, the problem is that BTRs were based on the legislation are a revenue generating device. <coughs> they are not regulatory. And the only, the sole ground that is in your ordinance to revoke a BTR is fraudulent practices. If they are remitting everything to the state that they collect and the state's not, is giving it back to Hillsborough County and not us, but that's a state 
issue. They don't remit directly to the tax collector. Well, I, I have tax. a company yeah. that does sales tax, I understand, but um, how that works. But if they've been notified on numerous occasions that they are submitting, I'm not worried about as much as the 6% now, but they're remitting their, they're basically remitting their one cent for PASCO to the wrong county. That's too many. And that's, I mean, that's basically what they're doing. Knowingly doing that now, knowingly well, doing that. But they're remitting it all to the state, correct? Well, I would assume that's how they're, I don't, I, you know. You're right, I, I, so the state would, needs to send would, it to us. Would, so the state yeah. needs to send it to us. The eight and a half. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a Department of Revenue. Eight and a half that goes to Hillsborough. So they're overpaying oh, they're themselves. they're eight and a half. So they're, paying, they're paying a penny, they're paying one and a half cent more. Or actually, right. they're charging their, see, they're charging the citizens of Pasco County another one and a half cents is what they're doing. And they're not, and they're submitting it to the wrong county, and they're not giving Pasco County the one cent that pays for things like our environmental land protection, pays for economic development, pays for more schools, and for our sheriff's office and transportation. But they're no, the problem is, and, and I, saw that, I guess my issue lies too, because we had these conversations, it's been over a year ago, and we had some of the folks that were doing it, some at, at no fault of their own, but some that still ignored it, but they continue to ignore, I mean, in my mind, it, they're, I mean, you, you're gonna have to use your talk when it comes to, you know, attorney talk here, but knowingly continuing to do something, which in essence, to me, is, we use my words wisely here, um, I, it's defrauding the taxpayers. I don't understand why they wouldn't want their prices to be lower. Wouldn't, right. wouldn't her uh, business license follow where they pay the tax? So if they've got a business in Pasco, wouldn't, so, even though it's a zip code that goes both counties, wouldn't they still be paying that? Well, it's, it's puzzling to me why somebody would... Ignore it? No. That's not what I was going to say. What I was okay. going to say was it's puzzling to me why someone would get a business tax receipt from... Mr. Fasano's office, and then think they were in Hillsborough County. Don't invest in that business. That's but if I mean, they that's pay, a, that's the, if they pay taxes to the Florida Department of Revenue, then doesn't the Florida Department of Revenue turn around and give back Pasco the one cent? They should be. And how do we know so they're what's not? What's the confusion? Are they paying? Well, if they're, they're paying the Florida Department of Revenue, they're not paying Pasco or. Orlando or any other county. So then, is it Florida Department of Revenue that we have to talk to? Um, can, it, can, I, can I make a suggestion that we I just ask Senator Fasano to come in and explain on the next meeting instead of us making the assumptions on what we can do that. Talking about, I've talked to him many times, and we worked together on some things last year on this. But you know, I, I'd be I happy to talk to the senator about it. I, I mean, the, the, what I got was the chairman forwarding me the letter that he sent you and asking for a legal opinion, which I've given you all. Right. Um, and so, I mean, I'll be happy to, to see if I can help get this straightened out, but it's, it, it, I just don't think you can use the tool of a BTR to do it. And if you do, you're going to have hearings with these businesses in front of you. Cool. Cool. Um, um, what is, is there a legal recourse that we have as a county? Against the Department of Revenue? No. It's, uh, against someone charging against the our individual. citizens too much money. I mean, I mean, what, what do we even have anything other than say, please, you're, you're being dumb. What else can we do <laughs> legally? Can we require people to put a sticker on their window that says Pasco sales tax is seven, no. you know, point seven or whatever, point or something? So is it the fact that they're collecting the do. wrong sales tax no. amount, or they're they obviously they pay for DOR? So is it DOR? But then, okay, so what? What is the Florida statute that allows us to put liens on the homes if they're not pay, the taxes aren't paid? You're dealing with the Florida Constitution with property taxes versus 
yeah. sales yeah. tax, which is a general law, creature general law. So if they've been told multiple times where to pay the taxes to and they continuously pay them to the wrong place, is it my then they were asking to revoke their license. Um, I don't think you have the authority to revoke really their nice. business tax receipt unless they are engaged in fraudulent activity. And I and at this point, there's nothing that indicates that you can make that claim against these businesses. That there may be a claim, but I don't have enough uh, uh, enough facts to right. to go down that road. Is, is it possible to get a list if if uh, Senator Fasano knows who they are? I don't mind what. I, apparently, Mike's telling me that some of them may be in my district. I don't mind going and knocking on their doors personally and talking to them about it. I hate the thought of our citizens getting charged more than they need to be. Um, so if, if I, I'd like Senator, I'd like him to come in, but I'd also like to see if we can get a list and then, and I'll go talk to people in my district. Okay. Yeah, you can bring the list to us and we can announce it on the... Yeah, let's announce it. <laughs> <laughs> and let's talk uh, to them. Well, let's, I'll do some research on it also for next time. So when we meet again, I'll try to have you a little better answer and I'll reach out to the state on that same issue. Yeah. Maybe somebody that can give me that advice for the state. Yeah, the problem lies. I'll reach out through the yeah. Senate president. And it, listen, there's again. simple, there's easy mistakes and that's sort of the things that happen in the beginning, yeah. some of them, because the, some of the zip calls cross, cross over from Hillsborough to, to um, Pasco and what initially happened with some of these new businesses that came to Pasco County. Um, you know, how their corporate offices were setting up mm -hmm. the remittance. Um, it was showing Hillsborough own County, right? But the problem is, what he's saying County, is that they they've been told, basket. some of these have been told over and over and over again. Right. They're continuing okay. after notice numerous times. They're not okay. correcting. We'll look further into it. Madam Clerk? Yes, I do. I have a, a couple of announcements. I received notification late yesterday that Pasco County was awarded the um, Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting by the Governor's, uh, or sorry, Government Financial Officers Association, and that was provided to us for the 37th consecutive year. So um, hats off to Pasco County. Um, right. It is part of the, con um, the comprehensive annual financial report that my office works with our outside financial auditing firm. We also work very closely with uh, many county departments, and specifically um, Office of OMB, and um, we also work with the Constitutionals. So hats off to Pasco County and the Constitutionals for the 37th consecutive year in receiving the award. Wow. I know, isn't it exciting? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it is. Something to celebrate. Um, just a quick reminder, we have our Big Shred event this Saturday in Newport Ritchie from 10 till noon. If you want to um, shred any of your sensitive or personal documents, we will have a shred uh, truck there from uh, uh, Shred360. So thank you to um, Cam Caldell to partner with us on that. And also um, a big shout out to Pasco Recycling and Education. Uh, I think it's, is it Rachel Dobbs? Um, she has helped us put that effort together. So thank you to her, please. And um, we have our event for Dade City is on February the 6th. Same time, both are at the Judicial Center parking lots. We look forward to seeing our community there. Um, we have in February our Valentine's Day wedding ceremony coming up. Um, we are excited about that. We uh, married 24 couples last year. We will limit um, the couples this year, make sure that they are properly social distanced, uh, but we will um, still do that ceremony outside of the historic courthouse. Um, and that is the updates that I have today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I've got a few items. Um, I did take this past week, I took a tour of Ridge Road, the construction. Pretty amazing uh, to go out there on that road. I think I heard that Jack might have been out on that road some. 
But uh, when you go out there and look at what they're doing, and I drove the whole distance from the east to the west and back, um, just pretty amazing to see that work that's going on and, and how uh, cumbersome that, that work is to get that road through there and all. So, Do we have a date, a completion date? I, I will tell you what I've heard, and so, somebody might come tell me different if this is not true. <laughs> but the fact <laughs> of it is I heard they're working on, on two lanes first, and that possibly those two lanes uh, would be available for an emergency use only if we come into the next season's storm well, issues to move people off the coast and then carry them just to the Sun Coast. That's if I remember that right. So it's, it's which, supposed to be open to traffic this summer. Yeah, sometime this summer. It's emergency during a hurricane. It's supposed to be open to traffic this summer. Oh, okay. And the, two lanes. Lanes. the trail two lanes. is the oh, other okay. side. The trail's on the side that will be then we'll, done. We'll then. get done to that with everything else. Yeah. The they, they, oh, yeah. they pulled the trail out. It's not happening. No, well, don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't get her started. Don't get her started. I thought you heard that. Uh, I thought you heard that. But all I'd that. like to, uh, <laughs> I think I did that on, on uh, <laughs> Thursday afternoons when I toured that. But prior to that, I'd like to thank board members for their. Uh, speaking out about uh, the connection with the Sun Coast, and I'm sure, and it sounds like it, uh, we were hurt. So yeah, that's, uh, great. that's a great deal. But you got to be thankful for um, Secretary Quinn's staff and all that they've done for us. As long as I've been on the board, when I started four years ago, they've spent upwards, I think, of a $400 million or so toward road projects throughout this county. So you, you think about what's going on, they've had improvements to 75, improvements to 275, improvements to I-4, 56 coming across the southern border of our county, Ridge Road now coming, coming to where it's coming, um, 54 construction, four lane from, from Wesley Chapel into Zephyr Hills. 52 reroute happening and 41 and Suncoast, all that's happening all at the same time and some 41's happening. But if you take that and lay those roads on top of the county map, that's pretty amazing. Amen. And, and when you think about it, it's four years. In the next two or three years, those will come to fruition and those roads will be operating and you'll be really moving some traffic. So. It's, we got a lot to be thankful for, for FDOT working with us like they have, and, and they've, they've, uh, they've done a lot of good things here in this county. So the future for our county looks, looks very good for that. And, and the fact that along with uh, doing Ridge Road, you're going to have a new road called Sun Lake going, going from 52 down toward uh, 54, which is another road <laughs> across there. Pretty amazing when you look at that area out there, and I was out there looking at the construction right now, how beautiful that territory is kind of a sweet and sad time because our country is very beautiful, but we've, we're preparing for the future with Moffitt coming on. It's right in that area where all this is coming. And it's a great future for our, our county and our citizens. Um, I toured um, Thursday, I went out about 11 o'clock to St. Leo to tour the uh, uh, COVID testing, or not testing, but the vaccine being applied to people come through the lines. And it's very, very well organized. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Napier and his team did a great job from about, I think, 10 to 12 while I was around there. They did over 300 vaccines in that system. And they were supposed to do, I think, a total of 500 then. And they, like you were told by Mr. Biles earlier, that they got 9,700 vaccines that came in for this week, 3,500 of those for uh, second shots. And then um, they're upping from 500 to moving to 1,000 at these drive-through sites. And, and the limit to what we can do and vaccinate of our citizens is nothing but the vaccine. Because we have the people, we have people that are able and capable of doing the job of vaccinating our citizens. Yeah. 
And we're still, like I heard Commissioner Starkey say earlier, we still hear those stories. People can't get online. And vaccines are taken up very quickly. So, I mean, it's it's a shame. It has to be that way. It's, I wish we could have it every family put in a name and they get appointments and you just work them out. But we don't have unlimited supply of the vaccine right now. And the more we get, and I think we keep reaching out to our legislators and our senators here in the state level and, of course, the governor, um, we're going to start getting more when it, when it's available. So um, it's already gotten a little more here within the last week. Um, you got to feel good about Mark Bella's report that he gave us today and all the positive things about uh, our government, our citizenry, how, how well things are going. And um, got to be very thankful for having good citizens, having good staff and employees and uh, leadership here in our part of Pasco County and, and the leadership on this board that are carrying a lot of things forward. And, and the result you see in those double-digit percentages going up is because we've been a very strong board and doing the right thing for our citizens. And don't forget, our citizens stepped up and did the right things by voting those ordinances in that, uh, you know, provided for our libraries and our parks and and uh, fire fire stations and just on about those five items that they approved. And the citizens did that. So we, we're very lucky to be and fortunate to be here in Pasco County. So let's see. And from that, all I can tell you is uh, I'm, I don't think we're quite there yet, but uh, all the departments have been working on customer service. And all I can tell you is just think about customer service, customer service, and, and it will get there. It takes time. but And <laughs> the real problem is with this customer service is you've got so many people wanting to come here and so many permits that are stacked up on desk that our personnel are just pushed to the limit to get things done. But it's all good things, and I know they'll continue to do so, and hopefully we'll continue to get improvements in those areas. So that would be a good thing for our county. With that, um, we stand adjourned. Mr. Chairman? Oh, excuse me. Did, yes. did we want to have a conversation with Port Richie or just schedule something? Um, well, there's a lot of information here that we, I think, need to talk about. Yeah. I think we need, let's let them get the uh, audit and then schedule something. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can we discuss just a few of them so we can give them, um, the mayor, a list? of items that we expect to have before the next time he comes? I'll tell you what, I'll... Um, I think it's a good idea for yeah. every commissioner to put a list together and they can have it ready. Send it to me. Yeah. Yep. We'll Send your list to uh, Mr. Biles and he will put manager. that together and he can get with the new administrator, I guess, over there. So. And I'll drop it off at his reception this afternoon. That'll work. That'll get it going in the right direction. Okay. Anything else? Good job. Thank you. Thank you.